Traders, how you doing? Tom Willard here with another update. It is, uh, what is it, Sunday, December 6th, 2020. Um, been a couple weeks since I did a video. I just got fresh off my scans, got some great ideas. So what we'll do is we'll first cover the overall markets. Um, spies, cues, primarily was what I cover. We'll go over some of the um, existing ideas that we've had carrying over um, and kind of just follow up on those. And then I'll go through some new ideas and then I'm going to touch on Bitcoin at the end of this. I've been doing separate Bitcoin videos, but I'm just going to tie that in toward the end of this video here, um, my sentiments on that. So let's get rolling. All right, first up, the SPY, again, daily chart, upper left, actually from the highest time frame, weekly chart, upper right, daily, upper left, 60, lower left, and the 15-minute chart, lower right. And again, as I typically cover just swing trades, investments, things to hold for a week, two weeks, months, depending on your time frame. Um, don't do a lot of day trading um, discussions here in these videos. So um, let's talk first about the spies. Uh, as I mentioned in my last video, we were flagging here on the daily chart. And sure enough, as I mentioned, uh, the lean is to the long side, and it continues be, to be to the long side. <clears throat> You'll notice here, we got kind of like a three-week base that we're breaking out of, a high kind of like a flag off this weekly chart here. You'll see it here on the daily chart, okay? So I took the liberty to draw it here for some of you guys that are more new to the pattern so you can kind of see the flag. So you'll see here's the flag pole, this move up, and you can see this consolidation here with higher lows and lower highs. And when it breaks the pennant, it's a viable event. So basically when I hit 365 here, now we're up to 369 and change, almost 370. Um, and the grand scheme of the weekly chart is not really breaking out that far. Uh, I'm not buying any more of this at this point. I'm riding what I got out uh, in it. Um, there's no reason to sell, of course, unless we break the bottom of this pennant here. So you're, you're looking at primarily at this point, I'm looking at about maybe 360, 359 um, would be a stop out point if this breakout of this flag pattern fails. But right now, things are as all systems go to the upside, things look, uh, look like we're going to continue. Um, we are extended up here. So um, there is more chance of a, of a shakeout, if you will. Uh, but keep that in mind. Just follow your plan. If you get shaken out, you can always just get out and get back in if it reverses. So um, follow your plan is the key. So let's take a look at the QQQ real quick. All right, on the Qs, you'll see here on the weekly chart, again, we're just breaking out to all-time highs here um, off this little consolidation, kind of a double bottom and a, with, a, with a little handle here, like a, like kind of like a kind of a big cup and handle. And you'll see it here, these two attempts to go higher Based out, volume is low. Now, a little bit concerning is the breakout here is not with any sort of force. The volume is still pretty light. We are getting close to the end of the year and the holidays. Volume will probably pick up here a little bit, and then it'll die off toward the, uh, obviously, the end of December. But um, keep in mind, you know, we're, we're at a highs, and again, you got to just flow where the river's going. I know a lot of people are thinking, ah, oh, it's gone too far, um, you know, and they're trying to get short. And, and look, just follow the trend. It's just so much easier to make money. It's kind of like... Um, using the power of the market with you instead of trying to force something um, the opposite way. So right now it's all systems go to the long side, but obviously, you know, with caution, have stops uh, as we could get a shakeout here. Um, but right now it looks like we're going to continue to grind higher into the end of the year. All right, uh, window. First up, we're going to go on some um, some trades that I've been in, still in, in a lot of them. Uh, some of them I've liquidated, but this one in particular, um, congrats to you guys that got in with this, on this one with me. We've been watching it with me since it's been the $2 range. I've uh, been legging into it, adding to the position, had this massive move up. As I mentioned, it, what, what was tipping me off here on these spikes was that something like this was probably coming. Now, again, without a crystal ball, I didn't know for sure. But you take your shots and you have your stops, and this thing just rolled. So um, we're up here quite a bit. I took profits, actually, on about 10% of my position at $9.75. And then I bought that. So the same shares back here at about $6.25. And now it's just oscillating. If you think of that uh, rubber band that gets pulled back and when it's let go, typically once it starts to settle to equilibrium, it, it, it oscillates back and forth. It oscillates back and forth. And so we'll get something like that. I think we may play here between the 850 or $9 range and $6 range um, as this moving average starts to catch up here on the daily chart. Now, it may just go ballistic and go to 20 or 50 or 100, and it may go to zero. Um, I don't know. You know, this the odds are when I see something like this is this going to continue? But um, you know, end of the year, uh, the 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 market where the market goes is going to be a, a an indicator or um, you know either a tailwind or a headwind with regards to this. 
but right now I'm still I'm back into my position and I'm continuing to ride it. And as it gets up here in around nine, I'll, again I'll start playing that game. I think if we get up in that high eight to nine dollar range, I'm gonna take ten to twenty percent off the table and see where it goes because we've had a massive run here off of the original entry point in the in the mid threes, mid low threes. Um, we basically you know tripled our money. Um, so it's been a really nice run, uh, and I think there's more to this, but it is you get, there's volatility is going to be huge. I would not be buying it up here. If it gets down to the moving average, 556, um, that's where I would look to start buying in and, and leg in. Don't if you got say for example you've got the money you want to buy 5,000 shares of this. Um, if it comes down to six, I'd pick up maybe a thousand. You know, 20% of it, leg in and leg out is my suggestion. But this has been a great winner. Uh, continue to ride this if you're in it with me. Um, I'll be on it, and I'll tweet uh, what I'm doing uh, here and there uh, as I do uh, randomly throughout uh, the weeks. Here's another one, this platinum. You know, I mentioned it was showing relative strength of the golds, and um, the entry point here is about $85 a share. Uh, it just went ballistic here. Uh, I took 50% off the table off when it hit 100 um, off this nice run. You can see the um, big volume here on this last day, kind of a... a, a I could be like a hanging man here uh, or an evening star, but the bottom line is that the momentum's here. This thing, I think, is going higher. Right now is not a time to buy. If anything, take some profits if you're in it with me. I already took 50% off the table, so I'm holding half my position. Um, I think this guy's higher, and what I might do is let's see if this settles in. Maybe it pulls back to 96, 94. You can see here you've got support at 95. That'd be a great entry point to buy back those shares, or I may buy back those shares if I get a pattern on a pullback deck back to that $95 area. And if not, this continues to run, great. I'm still riding 50% to the promised land. Uh, pot stocks, you know, I, I brought this up, and um, I'm in two of them. Uh, I was in three, but I liquidated Tilray. Took profits on that one. Uh, it's just it's not behaving as well as this one and the other one I'm going to show you. Uh, so right now CGC here, you'll see it's it's flagging again after a pretty good run. You'll see it here on the on the weekly chart. Um, it's got clear air to move to the left so it can go higher. Uh, I like what I'm seeing. The Momo is here. Uh, the moving averages are railroading here. You're above the 200. Watch for pullbacks or flags. Right now I think buying it over this high is a little bit um, aggressive. Uh, ride out what you got. If it bases out for another week or two, then I'd be more apt to buy it. It needs times to digest and allow this moving average to catch up to it so it doesn't get too far. You'll notice when it gets far away, it gets, comes back in. And so as this comes back in here, uh, I'd look to add to the position. But um, right now, uh, just riding what I got, it's a fantastic trade. Cron, you'll see very similar right here, very similar to CGC near these highs. It's not quite on weekly highs, though, so it's a little bit relatively weak. CGC is the stronger of these two, in my opinion. Um, but again, riding this out, again, I think a, a break over 950, too expensive. Uh, it's too extended here. I'd like to see a base out longer. If you get a pullback to the $8 range or to the moving average area with support to the left on the chart, uh, I would look to pick up more shares. So got Cron, got CGC, going to ride these out. Let's just touch base on Tilray real quick. Notice the weakness. I mean, right? So you can see here, again, Cron. Look at the weekly chart right here. Look at CGC. You'll see it's above this high here, so it's stronger. And look at Tilray. Look at this. Much, much. It got much more crushed, okay? Um, and you can see there's nowhere near this high on that spike that was originally done, uh, what was that, back in early November, that all of them had, Cron and CGC, right after the election, actually. Um, so this one, like I said, I liquidated. It's, it's not behaving as well. That doesn't mean this can't go higher. I think these pot stocks in general are going to go higher. So if you like this one, uh, I would say just because I'm out of it doesn't mean you need to get out of it and move. I'm just telling you what I did, uh, and this could be, uh, you know, could just go the, with the tailwinds of the pot stocks here at this point. They look like they're trend changing. They look like they're going higher. And um, again, follow your plan though, because obviously nothing's for certain. Take your stops if things start to reverse. Okay, uh, Genesis, this is another one that I've been in for quite some time. If you've been following my videos, you've been in it with me, um, possibly. Um, I, I still actually have the line here, which was the entry point here in the low fours from way back uh, in the summer. And it's been a great performer. And see, what I'm seeing here is, let me draw this for you. All right, so here you'll see the flagpole again and this kind of a flag. It's kind of like a wide base. You'll see if you want to x-ray down to the daily chart here on the left, you see where we came up here, and we just kind of settled in, and then we had this breakout day here on this massive volume. Um, this tells me we're going to go higher. Now, this one reports, I believe, 
this week, Tuesday or when I think it's Wednesday actually. It's Wednesday afternoon. Um, so mind that. Be you know have have an awareness of that. Um, but I think this thing, if it breaks past this high, it, it, it's off to another you know eight fifty nine dollars a share based on this previous move. You got a four to seven move, so it's a three dollar move off six. Extrapolated, that takes me to about nine dollars a share. I think this thing can go up there. Again, manage it to your plan. I've taken some profits off the spike. I'm looking for this thing to continue higher right now. This is a very good sign. If we go back in time, kind of let's just see what it looks like when it broke out. I mean, beautiful and the volume, and I think this is going higher. What we got here is just an oscillation where it shook out the weak hands. So um, if you're aggressive on this thing, I would say you could look to buy this in the high sixes now. However, 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 with earnings this Wednesday, it makes it a lot more risky in my opinion. So uh, I'm already in this. Uh, I'm probably, in fact, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to add to my position if it gets up in this area, even though this looks like a good adding position here. Uh, and if anything, I'm waiting for earnings. We'll see. Um, Tuesday, if this thing gets a run prior to earnings, I may take some more off the table. Um, if it hangs in this area, I'll probably hold all my shares through earnings uh, on this particular stock because it does look higher and technically um, everything is lining up for a continued move to the upside here on Genesis. All right, last one I'm going to just follow up on here. This has been a massive winner. Uh, for, for again, congrats to you guys that got in on this. I was talking about this after the spike here in July, August, that this was a top one to go long on, and I got in and wrote it. And at this point, I'm out um, all but about 30, 25, 30 percent of my shares. I'm just holding, looking to add to it. But you can see it's still extended. It ran so far, so fast. Um, again, I just took the profits, and I'm holding that that free position now with the market's money. And I'm looking to try to find a way to add. You'll see on the on the daily chart it's not so extens extended. It's kind of oscillating here. On um, the weekly chart it went went so far so fast. It's still extended from the moving averages. So watching this here for continued setup, what I'd like to see is it come back up to eight, maybe give me a pattern, and then boom, break out, and I'll buy in. I'll, I'll add to my position that I'm still holding from back in the three dollar range when I originally brought this up to be a top buy. All right, let's go to some juicy, juicy ideas, delicious little ideas I got coming up here from the scans. This one is gorgeous. IIPR, look at this setup. You've got the flagpole. Uh, it is extended on the weekly chart. you got a big move up here, and basically this big flag. I'm not going to draw it for you, but you can see it, right? You can see it here, the little pennant off the flagpole. Um, the volume here, I like this red day. I love the volume up on the red day. It took out all these areas, these candles here. Um, and probably stopped some people out. You never know. And, it, and the next day it gapped up, which was Friday, and reversed back up. So if you're aggressive, you can look to buy this around 155 before it breaks out past 160. Or you can buy it over 160 uh, is a more safer buy, but you're paying more for it. But that will really be the confirmation that uh, this flag pattern will probably commence the move to the high, to the upside. Um, so I like this one a lot. Um, you can nibble into this thing uh, in this area, but again, have an idea where your stop's going to be, probably down underneath this part, this low here, which also begins the, the point that if you want to wait till it breaks this high, you can too um, before you get in. Uh, most people I know want to bargain shop, so you know you can do a, one of my approaches is I'll, I'll buy like maybe a 10, 15 percent position, front run it. Um, hold it, and then as it breaks out, add the rest of it. So that way, I'm kind of averaged down a little bit on my cost when it breaks out. Uh, and also, if, we get, if I get stopped out, I'm buying such a small amount of shares that um, the the loss is uh, from a from a perspective of dollars and cents uh, is a lot lower and, and a lot more um, digestible, if you will. So this one looks great. Uh, I like it to the top side. Watch it closely, my friends. Another one. Super gorgeous. Look at this thing up here, basing here near the highs. You got the cup, you got the handle. Um, it's sideways here, but look at a break it above about 80. What is it? 80. Let me see what the high is here. 80, 89. So say $90 a share. If it breaks above 90, you got this nice base here setting up. You see volume dropping off here on the weekly chart. This thing looks higher. So a buy over 90 is um, doable. Uh, all things considered, when it happens, make sure you check in the market. Stop would be under this 85 to 86 dollar range here under these under these candles. So Booz Allen Hamilton looking hot as a possible long side trade. Now this one I'm not sure if I brought this up in a previous video, but this <laughs> this is the one that got away from me. I literally I was this was on my watch list, and when it was right in here in this red dot bar, when it got ignored here, kind of like what I just showed you on um, IIPR. 
where you get a red down down day. Now the volume wasn't as high here, okay, um, and it can't go lower. You can actually front run it, and I almost did, but I didn't. I got distracted. I don't know what happened. I didn't take the trade, and then it, it inched up here. And I thought, okay, well, let's see what happens, and and then it broke out, and so. I, unfortunately, even though I had this on my watch list, it, it completely missed it, have no shares in this thing, don't own it. But I keep my eye on these things, okay? And right now, again, we're, we've got the setup where it's actually just, it's already broken out um, this last week here. Uh, but I don't like how extended it is. I don't like to chase things. So I'm watching it. I'd like to see it come back in maybe uh, in the low 30s, and I may consider it. But I like this one. It's very strong. I think it's going to go higher. Um, but obviously we need to demand um, our entries or no play. I think waste management's worth watching here. You've got this kind of double top. You can see this handle forming. Um, you see the volume here on these green candles here as it broke down with that big red day the, three days ago. Um, it's hold and serve here. I think if you want to try to get into this thing at 118 with a stop under about 116, you have a $2 stop. Uh, I think this thing can go. I like it. It's uptrending. Uh, waste management watches along with those points of entry and exit. All right, these two rails, the transportation stocks look good. CSX, um, again, high handle here, or high um, base, if you will, after this big move up. You can see the same. Again, I'm not going to draw it for you here, but you see the flag, right, the flagpole. You got the consolidation after a nice, big, pronounced move up. Um, volume dropping off now. It's starting to pick up here. I think if this breaks these highs... Uh, CSX is definitely worth looking at getting into. The uh, entry would be about 93.75 a share, and your stop would be below these candles. So say 88 to 89 dollars a share would be your stop. Uh, or to, yeah, exactly, 88 to 89 dollars a share would be your stop. So CSX definitely put it on uh, watch. Uh, I think this thing looks higher, as well as UNP. Very similar here. You got a base here near the highs. It's pulled back. Um, Volume starting to pick up here over the last four days. Looks like it wants to go higher. The entry on UNP be over about 210 to 11, with a stop under 200. Okay, so you're about an $11 stop, uh, and you're looking for this thing to start slingshotting back up higher past 2 210. Probably extrapolation-wise, you're looking at about 240 to 250 target uh, would be my guesstimate uh, if this thing breaks. So watch UNP, watch CSX in the same group. Both look strong. Another one, William Sonoma. You know, this one, again, I had long in this area here and got out, and it's back up now, and it's been kind of chopping around here, so I'm completely flat. I took my profits on it, and now it's up here flagging yet again. Again, you see it? Flagpole, pennant. Flagpole, short pennant. Breakout would be above these highs, so what is that? 115-ish, uh, 114.70, uh, with a stop under about 105. Uh, for gap support there. So that's what you're looking at on Williams Sonoma. This is another one worth watching alongside. Uh, it looks higher. All right, Colgate Palmolive, another one up here near highs, basing near the highs. Again, 80, uh, you know, you can see the base here. Um, it's just hanging out, consolidating over the last since pretty much the, the early move in November. Um, it's been sitting here between 84 and 86 for about uh, three, four weeks now. And it looks like it wants to go higher. So the breakout would be over 86.50-ish. Uh, and your stop's under 84. CL is another one worth watching on the long side. All right, last thing I want to talk about here before I go to uh, cryptos really quick is um, gold and oil. So gold, uh, as I mentioned in my Twitter feed, as you know, I've been nibbling in off this move down here. And it's had a nice move off this low. And right now, you're actually look, it's looking like it's more of a short here on the daily chart. It's coming right back up. The moving averages have curled over. Um, and it looks like a short. However, I'm more long-term bullish on this. So again, I got in pretty cheap in here. My stop will be below this pivot that has been set up now on the daily chart and looking for higher prices. There's no entry here. It's too far up uh, at this point. Uh, and this is the problem with GLD and a lot of these is they're gappy. See, it gaps almost every day. It gaps. Um, so you, you know, it's hard to get an exact perfect price. Um, the weekly chart does smooth things out. But um, I think this thing is definitely looking like it wants to go higher. However, on the daily chart, it looks more like a short. Um, and I like to see it retested. Like I said, I, I, at this point, the weekly chart is still uptrending, even though it's basically double tapped here where it, it tried to go higher and it came right back down. And a lot of times what that does is that shakes the tree of the, the most weakest holders and um, allows it to go back up. So I'm swinging long in this thing. Uh, and I'm going to continue. I'm not going to sell anything into this this move of this nice four-day run off that low. But my stop is below that, so my my exposure is pretty low. I've now ha I had my stop actually lower when I originally got in because I didn't know how far it was going to go down. And, I, and again, I was nibbling, so this isn't a full position. 
Um, however, now that we've got a line in the sand, 165.50 ish, 165 is my stop now on these shares, uh, and it's pretty low risk because I'm already, you know, that's about where I got in was in the in the 167, 168 range. So um, I'm liking what I'm seeing, but at this point, can't add to this position. Uh, don't add to it. I'm not adding to it. I'm just going to ride what I have and see what see what transpires. And I have my line in the sand where I'm going to stop out. And I'm not taking profits on what's what the, the pop that I've gotten over the last few days. GDX, um, the miner uh, ETF, you'll see also very, very similar. Um, some of my favorite ones, Newmont, same type of thing, right? It's come down here. It's taken out this low here. Uh, and it's kind of consolidating. But again, there's, the, the, they popped up so well over the last four or five days that it's really not an ad position. Uh, but if you nibbled in like I did, you, now you have a, a line in the sand where to get your stop in and get out if it starts to fall apart. So AEM is another one I like. Um, just showing you the chart there. It's looking like it wants to pop back up higher, but it's coming into the moving average there, which actually looks more like a short. And then wheat and precious metals. So those are my top ones that I like to trade and be in. Uh, and I was in swing at one point and then took profits on everything. Uh, but looking to leg back in very slowly, very gingerly here on this move down. Uh, and, of course, pull the ripcord if the thing starts to fall apart because uh, it's definitely possible. Now, oils, good God. Uh, XOP, so um, this one I'm actually in. Uh, I bought it off this pullback here on the daily chart right here. Um, Engulfing day, beautiful, uh, up here, moving nicely, broke past the highs. You'll see it here. Uh, next stop, next target area is around $70 a share. So if you're in this, by chance, I didn't bring it up, I don't think, in the last video. Um, I just bought it on my own. Uh, that's what I'm shooting for, for a target. Um, obviously prudent to take some profits here off this run. If it continues to go maybe the mid-60s, you can take some off the table, depending on your share size and your plan. But uh, right now, looking looking hot here. All the oils. Uh, the big one, Chevron, Exxon Mobil. Look at the runs they've had here since the election. XOM, um, another big run, right? Uh, Apache, big run. Occidental, big run. So all these, if you're not in them already, you don't chase them because they've gone so far so fast. But do like I do with the CELH. You miss them, you miss them. You get in and, and watch them, track them day to day, week to week. And wait for those setups because if the, the uptrends are happening, nothing goes up in a straight line forever. Uh, at some point, you'll get an opportunity to get in, um, and there will be a setup. So you got to be there, ready to nab it, and jump on it when and if it shows up. So track these because they look like they're changing trend. They're moving higher. Um, Devin's another one. And I, yep, Devin, beautiful. Okay. So no entries, but track these. Put them on your minders. Make sure you're watching them and tracking them and looking for ways to get on these because right now they're they're long gone, and I would not be buying them here. Uh, it, it, like I said, I, I bought XOP last week because of the pullback we had here on the daily chart right here uh, and just riding what I have. Uh, looking for a nice move, and now I've got to stop right here under this pivot um, the day I got in, actually, uh, and looking for a move here to this $70, $70 V-top that got put in here back in, looks like, uh, June-ish of this year. All right, as I've been saying, pound the table. Bitcoin is going to go higher, um, and it's, it's looking absolutely st stupendous here. It's looking great. Now, we had the big move up, and this big red bar, of course, you know, you, you see all the people coming out, oh, see, it's 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 uh, a bubble, it's falling apart. Um, I just calmly bought more in the 16 range, and right now, you can use this moving average as a guide. So 17,667 right now is where this 20 period is, 15,3. If it comes back in this area between these, these moving averages, I'm going to be probably picking up some, if that makes sense. Not about, you know, I'm not doubling down on my position. But adding pieces, uh, as I mentioned originally, when we got in back in the $10,000 range, my first target was 16,000. But then when we got up to near 15,000, what did I say? You go back to my videos. I said I'm not selling any of it. I'm not selling any of it until it gets to 19 to $20,000. Well, sure enough, it hit 19 and changed, and I actually sold 10% of my Bitcoin at $19,750, and then basically just riding out the rest of it and, and actually I expanded into some of the uh, bought some XRP um, I'll show you that chart here shortly but Bitcoin right now looks higher it's extended uh, what I like to see it do is base if you're not in it what you'd like to see it do is base longer obviously I want this thing to just keep going up but if it bases longer then the breakout point here is above this high what is it 19 19 9, 15. so 19 9, 20 ish uh, is your breakout point 
And if it breaks out past that, I mean, you've got a nice pivot here to work with at 16 and an entry point. If, it, if you get down the $17,000 range, uh, I'm looking to buy buy back some some of that Bitcoin. Okay. And again, you can you don't have to do it all at once. So just a game plan for you guys in general. But I think this thing is going to continue to go higher. I don't know how high it's going to go. Um, but I can tell you right now is it is extended and a more of a consolidation or pullback. And if it you know hangs out here and doesn't break 20 for the next couple of months, I wouldn't be surprised because it's run so far. Um, however, my gut is telling me, as I told me told you told me back when we were at 15, that I think this thing's going to slingshot past 20. I think we're going to double down. We may go up to 30 uh, in the next two to three months on this thing. Um, but again, I just got to follow the candles and the stop and the, the the setups. If they happen to get in, and if it gets really frothy, we get a big. Say, see this candle here. If we get this candle on this side with massive volume. Um, that's probably a short-term top. I would probably sell 25% of my Bitcoin into that, 30%, maybe even 40 to 50%, depending on the move, and then let it do this. Let it come back and buy those that Bitcoin back. Okay, so Bitcoin looks great. Congrats for you guys that have got in it, either with me or whenever you got in. Um, and I think there's no reason to worry or panic. If anything, just look for opportunities um, to when it gets extended away from the moving average, sell part of it and look to buy it back cheaper because it, it, it's it's like gravity. These these candles, the prices cannot get so far, cannot stay far as far away from these moving averages as possible. It's, it's like there's a gravitational pull here where it pulls the prices back to it. So as it starts to get extended, you can you can extrapolate and see how far it gets before it it basically allows the moving average to catch up. Well, this was a big one, and now you can see it's catching up. So if this moving average, if we go up and this gets up, gets catches up to this and this bases, um, you better believe I'll be buying this thing if it breaks out. I'll be adding to my position if it breaks out. Um, but if it breaks out tomorrow or this week, um, I probably won't be adding. I've got a good size position already. I won't be adding to my position if it breaks out. Um, but I will be if it give if we get maybe I don't know another 10 days in this price range between say 18 and, and 19.5. It may be a good time to buy. Ethereum also um, been on fire. You'll see it here on the weekly. Here's the daily chart. Um, very similar. It came up here. You can see this, and it comes down, fills the gap, comes right back up, and is setting in, settling in up here. Volume's dropping off. Uh, Ethereum is also worth watching as the buy above that if it catches up to the moving averages. Okay. And XRP is the last one. I can't pull it up on my trade station platform, so I'm going to pull it up on this other. Uh, um, software. All right, so here it is in Kitco. Um, you'll see it's, it's it was in the 24, 20 to 25 dollar, 25 cent range, um, and then it broke out here with with um, all the cryptos, not all the cryptos, but the Bitcoin and Ethereum at least, and really, really ran. I mean, basically it went from 25 to 80 almost um, in a matter of three, four days. Uh, and it's doing what I talked about, right? The oscillation. When you, when you pull back the, stri the spring and it goes, it starts, it, once it's settling in after that kinetic energy is burned off, it starts oscillating back and forth, back and forth. And so it's just this giant pennant that's ha happening after this, this uh, flagpole and looking to buy more if it breaks out above. Okay, so this is a cheaper one. You can buy a lot more, but I think it's more risky too. So keep that in mind. But some of you guys with less lesser um, money to invest, you could buy a lot more XRP, and you can see the return percentage-wise uh, was phenomenal, uh, better than Bitcoin percentage-wise on this move. Um, so I think you should be. I'm definitely diversified. I own this one as well now. XRP, Ethereum, and Bitcoin are the three that I own in cryptos. I'm, I liquidated my Litecoin. Litecoin actually ran too. Um, but uh, all these are worth watching, okay? All right, guys. As always, appreciate the, the watch. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Hit me up, Tom at TomWordTrade.com. Comment on the video. Uh, let me know if there's other things you want to see on these videos. Um, and uh, trade well. Trade to your plan. Take your stops. Remember, you don't have to know what's going to happen. You just got to follow your plan, uh, and you can make a great living in the markets. Have a great week. We'll talk to you soon.